that this talk is going to be about NLP and it's called NLP Easy. And we can see this already. Uh, and you're going to present to us an easy workflow. I'm really curious to see what that is. Yeah, sure. So everything is, is ready for this. So please start your session. Cool. Um, yeah, so thanks for, for having me here um, um, at the EuroPython 2020. Um, as you already said, I will talk about the workflow to analyze and enrich uh, and explore textual data. Um, we call it, so you sh said NLP easy, we, I like to call it like NLP easy, so easy NLP easy, you know, uh, language squeezy. Maybe first about me uh, quickly. I, my background is in mathematics. I did a PhD in probability theory. Then I went a couple of years for a postdoc in machine learning at University of Stuttgart. And then I came back to Zurich, where I'm now managing consultant with D1 Solutions. Here, my projects are mostly data science, machine learning, AI, some infrastructure, um, visualizations, coaching of data science teams, stuff like that. Um, and a little bit in my free time, um, I'm doing a couple of uh, open source projects. Um, uh, the last one, Plot VR here, I presented actually last year at EuroPython in Basel, and today I'm proud to present NLPZ. Um, a little bit about uh, D1, so maybe a minute. Um, we are a, a consultancy with over 50 data professionals based in Zurich. Most of our clients are in Switzerland, a couple of them are also abroad. Um, we are um, covering many parts of the data pipeline or the data journey um, of a um, company. So it can be business consulting here in the top level, um, then also data architecture. So how should data be set up in a, um, in a company? Um, we're doing lots with data experience. So um, Power BI Tableau dashboards, we can help you with. Um, we also have some award-winning visualizations of, of things. Um, we help with data management. So the pipeline of how data goes through a company. And yeah, uh, machine learning AI, that's um, what I'm here today for. Um, we are um, doing smaller or bigger projects with that. And the NLP project that we have done, um, just to give you a, a little bit of an idea, of what is my, uh, how NLP came about. So what, what went, um, what were the precursors of that? So. Um, one project that we are um, we are quite proud of is the product solution advisor for Bossart, where we um, that's a, a company that sells screws and nuts and bolts, um, where we combined Elasticsearch and Neo4j. Then for health insurance, um, we actually abused Virt2Vec for non-textual data on the on the claims. Um, we also um, have a POC where we do. Um, where we uh, ingest documents into Azure Cognitive Services and set up a, um, a, a platform for that called Hawkeye. Um, we have done some customer feedback analysis with spaces, syntax, um, dependency parsing, um, and other things. And finally, this NLP Z now. And yeah, we are proud that we actually can uh, could show a couple of those projects in um, at least national conferences and um, also some international. So what is the background of NLP? Um, in my experience, um, NLP obviously is, is a big thing. So it might be the next big thing. There has been big process, uh, progress in the last years um, with respect to, um, to methods. So it started, say, 10 years ago with Virtuac, which was really a game changer for, for NLP. Um, and now in the last couple of years, uh, more deep um, models um, that are out there. Um, these are really important. And one extremely nice thing about the, the developments in the last years is that there are many pre-trained models. So you can, you don't need to, to um, spend, what they say, a, a transatlantic flight um, to train your, your big bird model. Um, something like that, you can just download it and then start using that. That's one hand, the, the methods. The other hand, there is abundant data. So there is lots of textual data at, for, for sure in corporations. So you might have customer relationship management entries, mails, documents, maybe customer reviews. There's text everywhere. 
And until now, for, 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 the, for the standard data scientists, um, they kind of didn't um, come, weren't that accessible. Um, but everybody knows they are really important because there are many use cases, this classification, sentiment analysis, named entity recognition, and so on and so on. But why aren't the data scientists using them as a standard tool uh, in their toolbox? So I think there are a couple of things uh, behind that. One thing is NLP obviously is harder than, say, standard machine learning. Um, it's much more higher than dimensional than what your usual machine learning methods as a data scientist um, are capable of doing. Um, you are um, also need some specialized pre-processing, how to convert those um, words into something that you can do machine learning on. And one um, thing also is a little bit that NLP experts usually assume that the text is the only thing that you're um, looking at. You want to, um, they, they, they want to extract everything from the text. And I think in, in most corporate uh, situations and, and um, yeah, exploratory situations, that's not the case. The, the texts are just one part of the data and you might have other things that um, NLP experts then call metadata. So you might have a, a, a longer uh, list of, of, of columns and one or two of them are text. Um, that's one thing why the, these NLP uh, methods or um, packages usually, they don't behave that nicely with, with the standard data scientist workflow. Um, others are um, the methods and models have a reputation of being really hard to use. That might be true or not. Um, and also some other standard tools are cumbersome for textual data. So if, if, you, if you want to plot something, okay, you, you would go for ggplot or seaborn, but how do you use text with it? So there is a little bit, uh, yeah, it's, it's difficult to grasp results with texts there. Um, Power BI Tableau, they have some interfaces to text, but they don't show it too nicely. And maybe your SQL servers, um, they obviously they can handle text, but, but are they really equipped to search in those and stuff like that? Um, so NLPC is, is something like a vision and it's actually a package that you can download um, that tries to help you out with those things. If you are not that, um, uh, not that uh, uh, big into NLP yourself. So what is NLPC? Um, let's see. So NLPC basically in the end is um, a package. You have your data in some pandas data frames uh, where each record is, in, is uh, corresponds to a document, maybe with other information. And then you funnel it through NLPC. And NLPC can help you with regexes, with spacey, with wader, um, stuff like that. That's one part. So it will enrich your documents with, by using other um, really cool um, giants on, ho on whose shoulders we stand on. So for Spacey, maybe you have uh, listened yesterday to, um, to the 15 things um, about Spacey. Um, I, I love Spacey as well. So um, this is really cool thing to, to go there. And if you're interested, please look at that um, uh, at the talk. Um, that's one thing, enrich your documents with NLP methods. But another thing is now, what, how do you get access to, to, the, uh, to the results? And there um, we found out that usually, how do you work with, with textual data in your everyday um, uh, work? You go to Google, you search for things. So our idea was it needs to be something like Google, something that can search. Um, and that's where we ended up with Elasticsearch. So one possibility with NLPC is then to um, uh, in ingest everything into an Elasticsearch database. That might sound a little bit um, too big for you if you're not accustomed to Elasticsearch, but actually we help you a lot with, uh, with that because we, um, we can give you, um, uh, we can start it for you on a Docker, um, Docker daemon that you have running. So we will see that. Um, yeah, it's Apache License 2.0. You can install it and you can add pull requests. There is a, a demo, Python notebook, and so on. So how does it work? Let's go a little bit. I'll go through a demonstration just in a bit. But first, to, to, to show you the, 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 the basic digest one. So um, 
basically, if you want to, you connect um, to an Elasticsearch um, server um, using just one line, and it might start it on, um, on your Docker daemon um, if you don't have running something already. Then you need to get your data. NLPZ cannot help, help you with that. And obviously, all the tools that you use for pre-processing your data, please use them on this data as well. So for instance, here, this is the Neuro Information Processing Systems Conference where I scraped abstracts. Um, yeah, and then you start with NLPZ, you set up a pipeline. So first you start with, um, with uh, you say a couple of uh, things about the columns you have there already. So the message and the title, maybe you have a date column in the year. And then you add some enrichment steps. For instance, regexes. This guy here parses um, LaTeX math expressions out of the message uh, column and puts it into a math column. Vader sentiment calculates a, a sentiment on the message. And space enrichment um, does a lot of things. So where we use a spacey model um, to, to extract entities, to extract part of speech, um, you can also go into dependency parsing and stuff like that. And then you just in, ingest it and it writes it to Elastic. So that's one thing that's really nice and you have it in a database that's really good equipped to, 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 uh, for textual data. But um, for exploratory analysis, that's not the, the best thing. It would be much better if you could just then look at the data. And that's what we do actually as well for you. So you can just with one command create in Kibana, which is the um, graphing um, uh, ver um, interface to Elasticsearch, uh, it will set up lots of visualizations for you and put them into a final dashboard. So usually that takes lots of clicks in Kibana to have that. And here it goes um, automatically for you. So maybe one more thing um, about how these different um, visualizations come about. So basically um, in the beginning you say, I have a couple of text columns and one date column. So after that, the pipeline knows message and title are text and year is date. Then you add this regex extraction where you um, take it onto the message column and output a math column. So the math column now for each record is a list of extracts. So a list of tags. That's not the same thing as text. It's more like a factor, a kind of category, something like that. Um, then if you add the Vader sentiment, um, it knows now, oh, there is a numeric column, sentiment. And if you do space enrichment, um, here we add lots of columns. A couple of those are numeric and a couple of those are tags. Um, we will see that. And now if you generate the dashboard, um, the text columns go on one hand side in, in such a, an overview um, of that, and on the other side in, in such a nice word cloud. Now your um, numeric columns, they get into histograms and your uh, tag columns get into uh, bar charts. Good, so let's see whether the demo gods are uh, willing today. I set up some, uh, a small um, um, data set here. So basically I scraped um, the uh, list of sessions or um, at Europe Python 2020. Um, so yeah, that's standard beautiful soup thing that you can do. I don't want to get too much into that. I'm just here now having um, all of the talks with their title, the URL and the list of authors and the author's profile. Um, so um, which are the, so Usually now in Pandas, if you had something like that, you would search for that using such a um, cumbersome thing. Okay, then you see I search for NLP, but actually where um, it might not be so easy to find where it is. So that's one thing. Um, another source that I took was that in, during the voting um, uh, phase uh, of EuroPython, I also um, scraped all of the um, proposed uh, talks there. So half of them actually did win. Um, this is much uh, easier to, to get all of, uh, there were all of the abstracts on that page. So here again, some, um, some beautiful soup scraping and you see you have now interesting data. So you have a title, a subtitle, an author, some, uh, a list of keywords, the type of the talk, um, the Python level, domain level, the abstract and so on. 
Um, for instance, here you see the proposals type, um, there are uh, different things. Actually, there are um, a couple of duplicates or two twins, so we drop them. And now we um, can, uh, actually we can just, um, so we see here that all of the uh, proposals titles are in the talks title. So actually they didn't change the titles. Um, so we can just do a join here. Now we have um, uh, the information whether uh, a title did win or not. Good. So that's the preparation part. Now what happens with NLPC? So I talked to you, we import NLPC as NE. Um, now we start a new um, elastic search. So actually you see there was no elastic search found here. Um, and it tried to connect to something and um, it didn't, um, uh, there was no container running on that on my machine uh, with that prefix. So it started an elastic search and a Kibana here. So I can actually click on this thing and go to it. And then you see, ah, okay, it's here. Cool. So not to, you need to have Docker installed. So chances are that you have Elastic installed or Docker installed, they are better than the, that you are, have Elastic installed. So I think that's quite nice. And also it helps you can have separate um, Elastic search uh, servers for, for separate projects. So now let's look again at the, whoops. Um, at the columns here. Ah, that's now bad. So we have title, subtitle, and so on. So actually, title, subtitle, abstract, these are all um, uh, texts. We have some tag columns like author and the keywords, um, the type, and so on, and whether it did win. And we also pass the link to our Elastic stack right there. And now we do something like we add a regex, for instance, here to um, that it should find out all of the HTTP links in the abstracts. Actually, that doesn't work yet really nicely, but what the heck. Um, we also add an, a space enrichment that takes a little bit time to load this model because it's something like, I don't know, 500 megabytes big. Um, but the pipeline is not run yet, just that you know. One important thing here is that we also want to extract all the vectors. Um, the spacey vectors. So these are maybe not that good like the um, like a fast text vector or maybe bird tensors or something like that, but they're good enough um, right now. Um, that's why we also need to go for the, at least for the middle, mid-sized um, English uh, model here. And then we also add a wager sentiment here. Okay, so let's hit it and you see, okay, it takes a little bit um, to process all of these files, um, but they are also now already um, ingested into uh, Elasticsearch. So that's nice. So let's also create the dashboard. Um, and here you see there are a couple of things inside Gibana that you, um, if you start using Elasticsearch um, or do something with it, you need to understand. But in the end, it's, it's okay because you can, um, uh, here we just set it up for you, so you don't really need to really understand it. But um, that's one part. You see, it takes a little bit of time, but then it's there. Okay, and we here for the analysis later we take only the one proposals. So now let's go to the Elasticsearch stack here, to the Kibana interface, and you see here we have a dashboard, and yeah, ta ta, we have now a dashboard here, um, and you see, okay. Let's dismiss this guy. Um, you have here a nice interface where you have um, the results here, um, 152. You have um, all of the authors, all of the keywords, the type. Um, you have, for instance, the word cloud for the titles. You can see what are the entities in the abstracts that um, the named entities that Spacey extracts. For instance, Python is by far the the, the biggest entity that it finds, API, Django, and so on. Um, you have the sentiment, okay, that's cool. Most of our abstracts are really nicely written there. Okay, so let's see if we now want to search for NLP. 
um, NLP here, ah, we see there are four, um, four results. And what is really nice in this interface, it already highlights to you what these things are about. So, um, and it now um, gives you also um, the informations here and you can then maybe say, I only want to see the ones that we did win. So now there are only three. Yeah, so it's really fun to go into it. You might also um, check here. So this is my abstract um, into the, the table that's now ingested into, um, uh, into Elasticsearch with all the additional variables that are not even uh, visualized here in the Kibana dashboard. Okay, so you see in a couple of minutes you have set it up. Um, but then you can also do more things. So one thing is, for instance, um, if we now look at these results, there are lots of things here um, that you can go for. Um, let's do a hierarchical clustering on the spacey word vectors um, for, for all of these documents. So actually here we put out um, uh, a variable. You see here, Um, for all of the 150 documents, you have here the word vectors. Um, there are 300 um, guys long, so we use NumPy to stack them. So uh, we have only, sorry, there are only 77 here because I'm only looking at the, one, uh, the ones that did win. And we do um, a clustering and ta-ta. Um, we can quickly show and see a first um, grouping of all of the um, um, all of all of the talks based on the vocabulary that they are using in their abstracts. Um, so let's see. Um, for instance, here um, apparently making pandas fly is somewhat e uh, next to my talk here. Um, and there's also a Pythonic full text search. That's nice. No. Okay. And um, then I also tried to look at, um, so now again, at all of the proposals, not only the ones that did win, um, you can do something like Tizni on that and um, visualize which of the talks um, did win. So the green ones and which of those didn't win the, um, the red ones here. And you see they're kind of intermixed in this Tizni visualization. So I also tried to, to, um, to train a, uh, uh, first just the random forest on it. It didn't work nicely. Then I tried to use BERT even. It didn't go very nicely. So probably it's not so easy to uh, predict which, um, which uh, abstract will win and which will, uh, won't win. So probably it's also a little bit, you see that um, they're often pairs next to each other and probably they're not independent. So if one gets chosen, maybe the other one will fail or yeah, this was chosen over the other one, something like that. Okay, so that's the end of my demonstration. Let's see. Um, demo gods were very helpful. So you saw already, um, the similarity that we had uh, here, we did it on a uh, on uh, customer reviews for restaurants in Zurich in TripAdvisor. Um, if you are from the Zurich area, you probably know most of them. So you will see that Hiltel and Tibitz are really basically the same, uh, really similar in their in their way. And so they are here nicely in a cluster. You have here more the 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 beer things. You have here um, the very expensive ones um, and so on. So this is really nicely that you can do stuff like that with NLP. And um, you can also use the sentiment score on those restaurant views in Kibana. You can really just by clicking. Um, um, so if you have the, the geo coordinates um, also in the, in the elastic documents, you can set up such a, geolo um, uh, such a geo view and overlay the sentiment here um, just directly. So this is really nice to, um, to work uh, with, with those things. You can also do um, network visualizations here, for instance, we are, this is a kind of a insider or um, whistleblower platform in, in Switzerland regarding financial um, yeah, news. 
uh, and we used just the, um, the entity recognition to, to link um, people and organizations and you really see um, how this unfolds. Um, one more thing, so you can actually go to my binder and just start it because um, we set it up um, that you will have, a, um, so my binder actually just starts up Docker containers for you um, with two gigs of RAM and it we start up a Kibana and an Elasticsearch server and forward the, um, the ports over the URL. So this is um, goes really nicely. Um, here, please wait maybe a couple of hours. I, I didn't have it yet in the, in the master branch really. But yeah, it will be there in just a moment. And there are also the other things that you, so this is what I showed you, why I had Jupyter uh, running locally and I opened two Docker containers. But you obviously can also use Kibana and Elastic just running like on itself. So yeah, thanks. Um, my time is basically up. Um, NFPC is open source, so please go ahead and um, look it up, pip install it. Um, if you have PRs, um, yeah, they're welcome. Um, the package is still under development. So I don't have, I do it on my own time mostly, so I don't have time to, to, to invest um, too much into it, but um, there are some more upcoming features. So like um, adding more stage plugins for BERT or for um, cleaning, um, also, have a better support for incremental working when you when you um, ingest it um, you do a, your pipeline for a first time ingest it into Elasticsearch then maybe add some more things and so on um, so the, the the usual data science workflow um, that would be really important to put there have more stable APIs and documentation there is some documentation already but it could be better um, uh, support for integration of the pipeline in, into a real ETL thing. So that would be something cool. Yeah. So if you're interested in NLP or other projects or yeah, we are hiring, please contact me. Um, uh, here's the mail address um, and I'll be available in the talk NLPZ Discord channel now. So thanks a lot. Yeah. Thanks a lot for showing all of this to us.